you just make up whatever? <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. I, uh, I, um, I mean, what what strikes you about Crank? What was it that it was it was crazy lyrics? Or you, you tell me Jibberish. what you, <laughs> <laughs> that very well could have been the case. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah, yeah. Okay, we can go with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, hit me off again. Foresight Records went through a decline in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Continued to put out albums throughout the nineties. Mm-hmm. How did you? Well, there's a twofold uh, answer, what have you, to that, because I felt an obligation to the label, to the company, because it was my father's label, it was our label. Um, the problem with that, it was like when I came out with uh, All Out Bash, and before we came out with that record, I went to to uh, Tennessee, TSU, on the campus up there with the kids and stuff, and you know, hanging out at the college, and we was getting preparing to shoot a video. So I stayed up there for like a month and hung out, and I always like to hang out and you know, get in situations and stuff like that, and just hang out with the people, you know. Um, and then what happened? I noticed that. The vibe in the street was just, you know, the basic, it was just what it was, you know, it was what I was doing already. And I had gotten, you know, with other engineers and producers and trying to change, trying to, you know, be, you know, like more like New York and, you know, different things like that and moving out of my element and not realizing at the time. So, uh, then my father, him and um, Gene Marlow, they came to um, Tennessee to meet with me the morning of the video shoot. And I was like, um, listen, and I, I, we had breakfast. And I told him, I said, uh, we can't put this record out. And my father was like, uh, what are you talking about? You know, we done spent, you know, about $150,000 thus far. And you're talking about, we can't put this record out. You know, we, you know, we got this, we're doing this. And I'm like, listen, that 150 is nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Compared to what we'll lose if we put this record out. So... Gene is sitting there, Gene is listening, but Gene is like, well, I got these distributors ready to go, and we got to get them this product, and, you know, and at that time, it was like, you know, you know, we had mad pre-orders because they just waiting, you know, on the ADE album, and I'm like, listen, I pleaded with them, man, I pleaded with them so bad that we couldn't do it because what I realize is, the people didn't want to hear no advan- advancement from me. They just wanted to hear the same stuff I was, you know, been giving them. Like, like Jay-Z said, you know, I got to dumb down for my audience, you know, because it's unfortunate. But, you know, the elevation of the majority of the people does not move like that. You know, they kind of stay in a certain pocket with that artist, you know. Another artist can come out and probably take them to another level, you know, but then that'll be, you know, another artist, a new face or what have you. But that artist that they came with, been growing with and learning with, that's pretty much the way they want you to come. And, you know, when you start changing, you lose them because they expect something from you and that's what they want. And, you know, so anyway, uh, they didn't listen to me and man I mean I, I, I remember that meeting uh, I remember that meeting and it was real bad you know because uh, they wouldn't listen to me you know and I pleaded with them and they put the record out anyway and that was the start of the downfall yeah
because that record came back and it had babies.